Hey there guys, welcome back to another video with me, Ben Rogajan, aka the Seattle Data Guy. 2023 is about to start, so I think it's time that we start to talk about becoming a data engineer in 2023. In this video, we're gonna go over the different skills that you need, while also discussing how you can layer those various skills in by doing different projects and things of that nature. So we're really gonna focus on not just the skills that you need, but how and maybe some examples of ways you could practice those skills. And then towards the end, we're gonna talk a little bit, at least a little bit, in terms of how you can actually get the job. Because here's the thing, you can practice all of these skills, you can become an expert in many of these, but getting the job is just another step. So we're gonna do a quick uh, last minute on how you can get a job as a data engineer. So let's start by going over a quick light framework that you can use to learn almost anything, which just first understand the topic more as a whole. You know, don't focus too much on the nuances of a topic, but start to learn about it. Fast understanding of it, you know, a very broad understanding of a topic, whether it be programming, whether it be SQL, understand everything that you're likely gonna have to learn. Then dive a little deeper, spend some time to actually understand more specific topics, apply those topics, whether that's in a project or in a quick just work form, and then continue and repeat until you get better and better at said topic. But let's start with the various topics we're gonna go over or that you need to learn as a data engineer. So here we're gonna kind of list out some of the topics you should learn, um, starting with obviously Python and SQL. Uh, those are the classics. After Python and SQL, you're gonna need to know some data warehousing and ETL uh, concepts. You might call that data pipelines, you might call it ETL, but those are kind of in the same bucket. Also, as you're setting up those cloud instances, poke around the various types of databases that you can work with, whether it be MongoDB, MySQL, so on. You might not have to be setting up some of these yourself, but you're likely going to be interacting with a lot of them. Also, another great category to learn is Docker and Kubernetes. Even if you end up going more of the analytical uh, route of engineering, um, I think it's important to know these skills constantly come up in my world. So, you know, make sure you pick those up. Also, another skill that has further increase in importance this year is definitely Spark. So spend some time learning Spark, not just how to work with it in terms of PySpark, but how does it look like under the hood? Similar things to that. And honestly, while you're doing all of this, you should get very familiar with using things like Linux, command line, um, SFTP, things that are maybe seem a little more system admin-y, but as a data engineer, you're going to do plenty of, um, you just never get away from it. So be comfortable in that space. Um, this is not necessarily in order. This, these are pretty much all skills you're gonna have to know. And honestly, these aren't even all the skills. Um, I could add Snowflake, Databricks, and so many other things. For now, we're gonna focus on these because if you get these baseline skills, everything else you can kind of learn over time. Um, but this is your baseline. Once you've got this, you should be pretty comfortable. So let's start with coding in SQL. That's probably where everyone should start in terms of what you should learn. I'd say, you know, there's a broad range of skills you can learn coding wise. You can learn Java, you can learn Python or Scala. I'd say you're pretty safe these days picking Python because there's so many different skills that you need that are Python based. So Python's a great place to start. Learn all of the basics, obviously. So that means, uh, you know, in basic Python, that's usually like for loops, if statements, variables, uh, functions. And then from there, you can kind of go to that next level, which is, you know, understanding object-oriented programming, functional programming, um, different concepts in that space. And then from there, you can start applying all of that. And that's where you start using things like Airflow, um, making requests to APIs. These are where you start actually taking all of those skills and applying them. And let's think about how you could do that. So let's say when you're learning the program, you write a basic for loop or a basic while loop. Great, that's you know step one. Well, now you need to go and take that for loop and maybe it just was printing, um, you know, an iterating number, but now you need to take that and you need to iterate over a request statement because there is a pagination setup where, okay, every time you kind of loop over um, this, this request, something is returned, there's some sort of token or something that you need to kind of go and be like, hey, while this um, value isn't null, continue to repeat this loop. So this would be a while loop that you're gonna repeat. And that's kind of how you're gonna learn to apply this skill over time. You could honestly start with a very basic project that just requires you to do some basic for loop stuff that eventually turns into something where you're actually poking around with request APIs. And you're going to use a lot of the same basics, just applying it in a very different fashion. Now, in terms of projects here, um, honestly, Darshil has a lot of great projects. I'm just gonna point out to his project because he's actually completed his and he has done a great job. So there's several like Airflow projects you can learn there as, once you get more advanced. Honestly, when you're doing basic Python, don't worry about like having a deliverable end project, just 
focus on being able to write pretty baseline code. Now, in terms of SQL, there's a ton of different ways you can learn it. And in terms of where you can actually learn Python, I honestly just recommend you use Free Code Camp. They have a ton of like three hour long videos where you can learn Python 3 for free. No need to go to Udemy. I mean, there's I'll put some Udemy courses below, but you can do it for free. Why, why pay for it if you don't need to? Similar thing can be said about SQL. You know, honestly, if you want to, you can just go to Khan Academy and learn the basics of SQL, learn your selects, learn your froms, um, get all that under your belt, and then eventually take all that and use free data sets from like Google um, and Google BigQuery and poke at the data there. That would give you the baseline. If you need to pay for a course because that just helps you, you know, focus on actually finishing it, um, I'd look into the SQL, uh, my SQL for data analytics and business intelligence, because this is going to force you to go beyond just doing some basic selects. You're gonna learn, you know, sub queries, views, um, how to use analytical functions and, and a much more deep array of functions than just, you know, your standard from and where and things of that nature. You need to have a pretty deep understanding of SQL if you're gonna become a data engineer. You can't just get away with, again, basic SQL. And from there, you can practice this on like HackerRank or LeetCode. Honestly, that's where I do a lot of my practicing is HackerRank and LeetCode. It's cliche, but it works. You can also try Scratch. I think I might have a link below uh, if you want to do interview practice. It's a great place to practice SQL personally. And there, he has a lot of great videos here for free. So you can even just check out the videos here. From there, again, you can just do a project. Um, I always point to Felipe Hoffa's projects that he does with SQL. They're a lot of fun. Um, they're a great example of how you can actually apply SQL in very unique ways. I'm gonna put up a few here, but there's just a lot of fun projects that you can try and do yourself. Okay, once you've finished Python SQL, you've got your foundation, you've got your base, you're ready to start building all the other rest of your skills. Now you need to learn about data warehousing and data pipelines, right? You've got the tools to kind of build on it, right? Like hopefully you maybe have learned some Airflow when you did Python. Uh, if not, you can check out this video that I'm eventually gonna put out um, on, you know, different, Python libraries you should learn as a data engineer, but hopefully you've learned it so you can do something to build up a data pipeline. Um, in terms of data warehousing, you've got SQL, so you're gonna understand how to actually interact with a data warehouse or how to build one at the very least. So now you can kind of go into that section of work. And for this, I just always will recommend Kimball's book on data warehousing. I am going to put a link below, um, but I'll put the picture up here above so you can just find it and Google it. There are free PDFs everywhere, so you do not even need to purchase this book. It's great. Um, and it will kind of explain to you a lot of the concepts you need to learn along the way. Everything from slowly changing dimensions to how to actually, you know, design tables. And yes, things might be changing over time, but this is where we've come from and this is what everything else is based on. So even if you're designing using different schemas in the future, you will want this baseline. And this will then help you learn how to apply your various SQL skills and Python skills um, in a way that can get you to that next level. Again, if you need a paid version, um, I recommend the Data Warehouse Ultimate Guide. It will go over a lot of the same concepts, but you're just gonna pay for it. And for some people, that's helpful. Again, totally free or not. Once you've done that, once you've gotten this baseline, you've kind of understanding what these various tables are that you're hearing, facts, dimensions, slowly changing dimensions. Now you need to apply it. You need to take this new skill that you've learned about um, and apply it. And usually what I tell people is like, hey, pick something that you like. Pick an app that you use every day, like Uber, like DoorDash, um, Facebook, whatever it might be, and pick a concept in there and start listing out what you think the dimensions would be like in a certain maybe aspect of this. You know, for reporting on DoorDash, it would be things like food items and uh, delivery drivers, uh, different restaurants, things of that nature. And then what would be the fact, so the orders. And then from there, what kind of questions could you answer? Now you can start pretending to you know, design this data model from there, start writing queries against it. And you can kind of, again, you're now layering and iterating on your different skills. You know, you learn some Python, you learn some SQL, you can now kind of start designing this thing, take this, write some SQL against it. And again, you're just kind of layering onto the skill. And now most of this you've probably developed locally, which is great, but a lot of development these days is not developed locally. It's in the cloud. So that's why the cloud is important. And I tell people just pick one, doesn't really matter too much, um, whether it's AWS, Azure, um, GCP. For the most part, AWS is still arguably the largest in terms of market share. So if you wanna go via that route, that's always safe. And Azure is definitely probably the most popular in enterprise. So if you wanna work for an enterprise company, you're gonna see a lot of Azure there. So those are definitely the most popular, but once you've kind of learned how to set up a compute uh, component, whether it's EC2 or GCP compute, you kind of get that they're the same-ish, they all work different. Like every time I have to do authentication between the three, I always forget how to do it and have to Google it. But for the most part, 
they function about the same. Again, it's all the nuances in between, like how to set up IAM that will really kind of bite you if you don't do it well. But overall, most likely you're not the person that's gonna be doing that, hopefully. So as long as you kind of understand how to interact with these various things, how to set up an RDS uh, instance, or you know, basically a relational database uh, service, by yourself, that's usually what you need to do. As well as understanding, I think the big thing that always gets me is like VPN, making sure the firewalls are set up uh, correctly. Because every time I connect with a client, I always have to play this game of like, all right, how do you have your firewall set up? Do I need to download a VPN client? Like, how are we gonna make sure that I can access um, the data that you have? So, you know, making sure you get all those little things in the cloud are important. And now again, you can iterate again. You've now learned how to model your data. You've learned how to write code. You can take all of this and build it on the cloud. Again, just further iterating your skills. You can play around with APIs that are online. I'll list a few data source uh, APIs that you can play with here. Take those APIs, parse the data, pull it out. Maybe use a Lambda, maybe use MWAA, poke around with that. Set up uh, Airflow yourself, you know, manually on a cloud instance, and then take that data, pull it out, push it to some sort of RDS instance or Redshift or Snowflake, whichever um, cloud instance you pick, load that in, and now you can start playing with it. Build a dashboard off of it, all in the cloud. Again, you're building these layers and layers upon skill upon skill. Now, as you're setting up that Airflow instance, you're gonna realize it might be very helpful if it was set up on Docker or Kubernetes. So you can layer now this new skill in, which is like, okay, I have learned how to code. I have learned how to, what a data warehouse and a data pipeline is. I've learned how to work on the cloud. And now I want to kind of take all of this and make it just easier to replicate. So now you can start learning about Docker and Kubernetes. For that, I just check out the Docker and Kubernetes practical guide on U Udemy. Um, I honestly just have a subscription that I pay for monthly for Udemy because I just constantly learning just one or two classes here and there out of a course. So I never need the whole course. I always just need one or two. So that's my quick cheat. So yeah, Docker and Kubernetes practical guide, because that's going to give you everything that you need to kind of know about Docker and Kubernetes. So you can go from zero to understanding how to actually work with it and how to take that and launch uh, Airflow using Docker or Kubernetes, if that's what you prefer. Now throughout all of this, you've probably found that you've had to work with some sort of command line. You know, you've had to learn how to work with firewalls and VPNs. That's kind of this other glue piece that you learn along the whole path of becoming a data engineer is maybe you didn't know this at the beginning. Maybe you were not a system admin to any degree at the beginning, but slowly because you've had to play with all these solutions, you start becoming a little bit better at, hey, how do I, again, SSH into a Linux box somewhere. How do I set up some form of key? Which key am I gonna use? You probably didn't have to set up an SFTP because we're now using S3 for a lot of things, but maybe you can have even poked at SFTP for a little bit, but you're just kind of learning all of the components that just let you work with all this other stuff. I've referenced that at the beginning, but you've hopefully kind of picked it up along the way. And there's a ton of different tools you can learn. You know, I referenced the cloud earlier and, and you can just get a, a certificate for any of these, whether it be for AWS or Azure, or GCP, all of them will give you the baseline skills required to set up these toolings. You don't need to be a 100% expert to at least get started. I'd recommend, you know, just picking an associate certification from one of these and going through a Udemy course for that. There's plenty of Udemy courses that cover how you can go through this. Again, you can cover Coursera too. Whichever one you find works best for you is obviously AKA the best, but Udemy is just generally Again, for me, the one I have a subscription to. So that's why I constantly use it. And at this point, you should pretty much have gone through most of the skills you should know. You can use uh, taming uh, big data with Spark and Python, at least so you can understand the basics of Spark. That's always a classic. Yes, plenty of people use Spark in their day-to-day -day workflows. Um, I think it's about 50% of teams that I've interviewed thus far out of about 300 do use Spark, so it's a decent amount, but most teams are pretty open to teaching you if you are a junior, about Spark because even if you learn it via a course, it's just never gonna be as good. All right, so now you've probably practiced all of these skills. You, in theory, know how to do it all. You've walked through it. You've built uh, various projects along the way. So the question becomes, how do you actually get a job as a data engineer? And this is a little bit harder. Becoming a data engineer for a lot of people is rarely a straight shot. It's generally a skill that you pick up over time through a career in some tangential role. Maybe you were a data analyst that starts picking up some airflow and learning how to build data pipelines. Maybe you were a software engineer that liked data engineering, or maybe you were lucky and you got an internship or a junior data engineer position um, at, at a company at the right time. But most people that I know generally came from 
some external role. In particular, I think a lot of people start as a data analyst and then eventually become more technical over time. And then after a year or two, somehow switch into being a data engineer, or maybe they go from BIE or BI analyst and switch into data engineering. One, I think it's important to point that out because a lot of people come out of college thinking this is the role for me and maybe become a little bit um, disgruntled when that's you know, harder to get to than they think. And two, I just want to say it's a very common path. I talked to person after person that's like, hey, I was a data analyst after a year or two, found a data engineering role or shifted into it by gaining the right skills. And now this is what I'm doing. So I wouldn't get too stuck on the fact that you aren't one yet. What I usually say is do your data analyst role, try to get attached to more technical projects, um, build a data pipeline if you can, and then and prepare for interviews, you know, make sure you're studying for these interviews, use Strash Scratch, use Leak Code, use Hacker Rank, whatever you need from a SQL and coding standpoint. Learn enough about data warehousing that you can answer the questions that they're gonna ask. Like if they're going to ask you how to model various kind of aspects, uh, Facebook always, I think, tends to do the airline, like model uh, an airline system for your data warehouse. Do that, be ready for those interviews, and then just constantly be setting out your resume, constantly be talking to people in the industry. I don't recommend, uh, pinging me about it because I'll do my best to respond to as many people as I can, but um, I definitely don't get to everyone. But to some extent, getting that first data engineering role is a little bit of a numbers game where you just have to wait and bide your time. But eventually I do think a lot of people find an opening. Also, while you're doing that, you can be writing articles and finding different ways to connect with people that can eventually open up a door as a data engineer. With that said, if you have any questions or comments about becoming a data engineer or even a solutions architect, feel free to post them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. See y'all and goodbye.